Well, the time is finally here. E3 2019 has finally come to a close. And what an E3 it was. One of mystery. It's spooky. Shock. And not too much. We have had an incredibly exciting year at Bethesda Game Studios. Given some of that excitement, impressed you're still here. It was kind of a weird, odd year, and in honor of it being an odd year, I'm changing completely how I do my E3 closing reviews. So rather than have a big extravagant segment, we're just going to go bare bones, just best of E3. What did I like? What did I hate? What were my personal awards of the show? All these things and more are going to be said in my segment called... Gaming with Class Best of E3 Awards for 2019. So let's not waste any time. Let's get right into the first award. Then check this out. And the first award I gave is the best new IP, which I gave to Ghostwire, the brand new Shinji Mikami game that was announced at the Bethesda show. While we haven't seen too much of it, has a lot of promise, and I have trust in Shinji Mikami and his team. I think it'll be a very interesting game. And they, they've, got, they've got me hooked already. The next award up on the docket, Best Indie Game. And I give this to two different games, uh, 12 Minutes and Way to the Woods. So 12 Minutes is the game where it's a top-down perspective where you're having to solve this kind of murder mystery and it's just like thriller and it, and it seemed really interesting. I, I thought that trailer really impressed me. It's one of the things I really took away from that Microsoft show. So that was a one standout indie game for me this year. Another, also from the Microsoft show, is Way to the Woods. This is a game where you're playing as two different deer in these kind of urban environments, and I, I don't know what it was. This game kind of, it, 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 it kind of seemed like my kind of game, just like a little weird, a little abstract, and really, it was a mixture of that, the look of it, and the music. The music in that trailer re really sold me, so I was like, all right, I'm, I'm down to play Way to the Woods. So th these two games, I thought were some pretty cool indies. And moving on to a little bit of a sadder note, the worst decision of E3 2019. And I have to give this to the Fallout 76 Redemption run that tried to play out during the Bethesda show. So they came out and said, you know what, we screwed up. We don't know what happened, but we screwed up. Even though they came out and said last E3, Fallout 76 is probably going to be a buggy game. The break it early test application. Because evidently these online games are hard, they can have some nasty issues. I read on the internet that our games have had a few bugs and that uh, sometimes it doesn't just work. <laughs> you know, we make buggy games. Our games are broken. We're, we're playing it up for laughs even though it's, it's not funny. Because I bought Skyrim, day one. I bought the strategy guide. I played that game. I, to this day, I have not beaten Skyrim. And the only reason why is because I bought it on PS3. That god dang PS3 version was... Oh my god, that version sucked. Because if you play a certain amount of hours in, the game will just crash. And I could never play more than 10 minutes before the game crashed. And I gave up. I'm finally playing it again on PSVR, but I'm so burned from Skyrim, and just them kind of being like, oh, you know, Sky Fallout 76, you know, it was buggy, you know, we we, we, we shipped the game in almost an un unstable setting, and we've done all these things that have really just threw people off, you know, we banned some guy for no reason because he went into a dev room, and we banned him to, and made him give an essay to explain why, and I don't know, despite them saying, oh, you know, we're making all this stuff for free, I think they, they still lost me. Like, and it really just came off like we have to redeem this somehow. And I, I don't know. It, it, it was really not. <laughs> it was smart and it wasn't at the same time. So that's why I think to me that was the worst decision. <laughs> Moving on now to a lighter note a, a new award this year Best Presenter. And oh, I, I can't believe it. Ladies and gentlemen, it, it's, it's a three way tie between Keanu Reeves. Ikumi Nakamura and the dog at the Ubisoft show. These three were a bright spot in the presentation of E3 this year. And and you see it a lot on Twitter and all the places. These three presenters, like, like John Bernthal, he was on stage. He's like, 
Uh, I, I kind of cared more for the doll, but Keanu Reeves segment was good. The Kumi section for Ghostwire was good. The dog chilling on the stage for that Ghost Recon game was pretty good too. Yeah, you, you give, him, give him a round of applause. Good, good segment all around. Just bringing some light spots to E3 this year. Because believe me, there were some pretty horrendous presentations, but you know what? I'm gonna leave that alone for now. Plus, I think it's really fucking cool. <laughs> Moving on to another new award this year, Best Car to Appear on an E3 Stage. I am not making these specific awards for certain things. It, it just turned out this way. But the award goes to the Lego car on the Microsoft stage. Yeah, who, who knew Microsoft was going to bring a car on stage? I mean, it's not like they've, they've done it every single year for every single racing game. But you know, I, I'm not going to say anything to it. They, they brought a car on stage. Hey, you know what? I'm still standing by it. It may be Lego. It's still a car on stage. I I'm still right. I'm not wrong. And another new award for this year. Best Kingdom Hearts trailer of the show. And this one goes to the Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind trailer at the Square Enix showing. Like I said, I I I'm not going for these specific awards, but... This, this was, hands down, the best Kingdom Hearts 3 trailer that I saw of the show. And you know, it, it was pretty good. Not gonna lie, it's pre pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Next award, big blowout games that were surprisingly good. Watch Dogs Legion. Y yeah. Watch Dogs game that I'm actually looking forward to. I, I never thought I'd see the time. Well, actually, no, Watch Dogs 2 looked pretty good, but... That, that the best thing from Ubisoft's conference was Watch Dogs says a lot of things about their conference, to be honest. But yeah, this game actually really surprised me. I, I think the concept that they're going for this time seems interesting. And I want to see how they're going to approach the play as anybody you want. So you already, I already know day one, I, I'm playing as Fat Joe. I'm going to find him in the game. I'm playing as him. There's nothing he can do about it. He's just got to lean back and, and accept it. That, that is it right now. The next one, kind of getting back to that sad note. Announcements that started out good, but eventually turned out bad. And this, without a doubt, has to go to Commander Keen, announced at the Bethesda show. It, it sucks to be a Commander Keen fan right now, because we, we, we've been quiet for a long time. There hasn't been a lot of news. And we finally get a new Commander Keen game. It's a mobile game. And it, it just ruined everything. Like, can we just get an, an official real Commander Keen game? You know what? Why, why couldn't you just remaster him? Like, like just, just do that. Like, it, God, it, see, I, I'm still so, I'm still so flabbergasted by it. Like, they, they really brought back this series just to kill it off. Like, people know, like how mobile games do in this market now. So, so what made them think bringing back this iconic series and making it a mobile game was gonna like bring people up? It certainly brought me down. Like my reaction, I was excited for five seconds and then I've never been so deflated before. It, it was like a balloon getting blown up and then a pin just sticking out right at the end to inevitably kill it. That's what that announcement was. I didn't see that pin, but it was right there about to just pop. Now moving on to uh, another segment uh, from last year, favorite games I saw. Now this is just a list of some games I really enjoyed throughout the show. And there are a lot of games I'm obviously going to miss in here, but I'm going to try and say as much as I can. So mostly everything from the Nintendo show. Nintendo really came out and, and dominated this year. They showed a lot of really good things like Luigi's Mansion 3 looks great. I think the new Fire Emblem game looks good. Dragon Quest Builders 2, uh, of course I love the original, that looks like it's going to be great. Dragon Ball Kakarot looks good. The only note I will have, they better not do the same Dragon Ball Z story. I better not be fighting Raditz again. I've, I've fought him so many times over the years that I feel I, I can recite it like line for line. Like I, I'm sick. Like Do something different. I, I don't want to fight Vegeta again. Stop! Final Fantasy VII Remake, which, which come on, you knew this was going to be on here. Like... That, that game looks outstanding. Doom Eternal, like, you can't go wrong with Doom. Like, Doom 1 was great, and Doom Eternal looks also really, really good. So I'm I'm all, all in on that game. 
Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, a game I was surprised I was even going to put on here, but you know what? It actually did surprise me. I, I think that game has some potential. And it's all it's all because they demoed it wrong. They showed this like gameplay demo, but they didn't even like talk about that. Oh yeah, you know the games like a Metroidvania where you're going world to world and you have like lives and you're having to backtrack and like it's very similar to like getting these powers and going back to the different places. Like why didn't they show that? Like elaborate on that. That that's more interesting than anything they showed. But now they had to demo it just with like this gameplay, just to be called Dark Souls in the end. Like how sad. And it'll be remiss of me not to include Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening remake, which that game looks fan fantastic. It it looks amazing. I can't wait to get my hands on it, and I'm I'm excited just to be able to play it again myself, but for a new audience. To, to play this game. This was a really good Zelda game on the Game Boy, and I'm, I'm really stoked about this. Moving on from there, uh, worst looking title of E3, and this has to go to two different games, Gears of War Pop and the new Contra game. I knew this from the beginning. Gears Pop was shown again. I was like, oh, well, I know where this is going. I don't know who this game is for. Like, it, it's targeted towards a younger market, but the younger market would have no idea what Gears of War is. Like, I don't know who it's for. Maybe the Funko Pop fans? I don't know, it just does not look... It, it is not for me. I will say that, at least. And the new Contra, it's like... I, I was actually hoping for a long time... Like, Man, you know what? A, a new Contra game would be pretty badass around now. I'd be happy with that. And uh, you finally get it, and it's like, you realize, oh, I... I, I, I guess I really don't want a new Contra game from the start, because this really solidified, like, man, Contra's kind of dead. The only good thing that came out of that Contra announcement is that now we have the Contra collection with all those games. If that wasn't announced, oh, this would have been way worse, but thankfully that softened it. So now I'm not that mad at this Contra game. It looks bad, but... At least we got old games, so I, I'm content in that in that regard. And now, most anticipated future title, Breath of the Wild 2 and Final Fantasy VIII Remaster. Yes, th these are my choices. Breath of the Wild 2, you, you should already know it's going to be my most anticipated title. I am a lifelong Zelda fan. I will always play whatever new Zelda game comes out regardless so i'm i'm there day one i love breath of the wild so i'm down with a sequel and just more of that world and that setting and final fantasy 8 it, it's kind of a surprise because a lot of people really are not too big on that game and i was really excited it was actually probably the biggest uh excitement i got out of the square enix showing and i just find it funny that this is my most anticipated title when i can easily just go play the game i can just walk over to my shelf right now and go play that game but I, I am waiting for this remaster. I'm, I'm very excited. Cool things all around. And getting near the end, favorite announcement of the show, which if, if you've seen my E3 content, then you already know what it is. I don't have to say anything. This clip speaks for itself. And now we've made it to the end with the really important reveals, the final conference ranking list for E3 2019. How did I rank it? Now that I've seen everything, I've let time sit in. What is it? Here it is, and there's going to be some controversy. Nintendo, Square Enix, Microsoft, Ubisoft and Bethesda. Now I just want to add, EA is included in this list only due to a technicality because their parking lot stream does not count. It is not a conference. It, is, it was a live stream in the back of a Petco parking lot. But if I was to include it into this list, it would slightly, and I mean slightly, be above Bethesda. So Bethesda would be the worst conference. I need to elaborate on all of these so you can at least kind of get my perspective into why I chose this. Nintendo, for obvious reasons, they came out to show games. They had 40 minutes. 
they showed so many games and in, just in terms of a really precise and to the point conference there was not a single wasted minute in that show outside of maybe that contra thing but they there was not a wasted moment every game they showed was promising and has me looking really really good in terms of like nintendo future and like the games i'm getting there and it's a really well like done conference square enix as well they came out to show games i think their final fantasy 7 7 was a really strong part and it had weak spots i will say it had weak spots but overall it was a pretty good conference microsoft another one too pretty good they, they came out they showed games they talked about the future they announced some really cool things they had some weak spots in there where things got a little slow and wasn't maybe the most interesting but you know it, it wasn't bad it was a pretty good showing from them ubisoft this was definitely not the strongest showing ubisoft's done of of the show they had maybe maybe three games on hand that really uh left me kind of like no that's cool the rest was kind of just uh, i was kind of really in between or just uh not caring at all so that's the reason why ubisoft got there it, it wasn't a good showing really for them and sneaking EA into this thing, they had one game. They had Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. That that was about it. Like, like I, I'm not going to include FIFA and Madden because those are very much the same game each year. And and Sims 4. It was pretty much just like updates. So they had kind of one game to show. And you know, one thing I will say that's very crazy. This is the first E3. And I've been doing this for a bit. This is the first E3, I think, where EA wasn't the worst showing. And it's only due to a technicality, because if they had a conference, who knows, things could have been different. But dead last is Bethesda. And and here's my reasoning why, because there are things in the Bethesda show I really enjoyed. I thought Doom Eternal looked great. I thought Wolfenstein Youngblood looked good. I loved Ghostwire. I think that trailer was really interesting. I think Deathloop has a decent concept, but the thing is, that's really it. Fallout 76, I really didn't care for that segment at all. Elder Scrolls Online. And that, that the entire show was a pain to sit through. It was awkward. It was embarrassing. It had some of the worst presenters. It had one of the better presenters, but it had some of the worst. And it was just such a weird show. It, it felt like they didn't need that. They didn't need a conference. They could have done everything on a video. And it would have been it would have probably been a better show for it. And this was one of Bethesda's worst. I don't know what they can do next year, what they have to show, but I I really hope they do better because this was this was an awful showing from them. And even from the beginning, I said it was one of the worst, and you know it still stayed. I thought maybe some things would change, but no. This year, Bethesda had the worst showing for me. But now with that out of the way, it's time for the real final award of e3 2019 what was my game of e3 the game that has still stuck with me that i am still thinking about since the show ended and the one that left me the most excited and ladies and gentlemen that game is drumroll please final fantasy 7 remake this is my game of e3 hands down without question just that they came out, they said, you know, we're going to show 20 minutes of this game. We're going to give you everything you want. People have been wanting to see what Tifa looks like. We're going to give you an extreme look into what Tifa looks like. You want to see what the game's like? Boom, here's the gameplay. Here's how the boss is going to work. Here's how the new mechanics. Everything. They gave me everything I wanted. And that game has kind of stuck with me. I've been hearing all this new info coming out and everything and it's got me really excited for this so i'm very happy with final fantasy 7 remake and of the show it's the game that's been on my mind a lot there's been a lot of stuff that's been on my mind for e3 like this and a few other nintendo games and other things but 7 remake was was it for me i think that game is looking very strong right now graphically it looks great the gameplay looks great and of the music i've heard they are getting it right so i'm i'm very excited for the future of this and for this to come out next March. I will be there for part one. I will be there for part two. And however many parts they are making for this, I will be there. So with all that being said, that was E3 2019. You know, like I said from the beginning, it, it wasn't the best E3 year. There were a lot of really good things, but there are also some things that, that weren't so great. 
but it was still a pretty enjoyable watch. And I'm sure next year's E3 will be an even bigger one because we'll have consoles on the horizon. We'll have more games, new announcements, maybe more surprises, maybe more, maybe more awkward presentations, so who knows? So that is going to be it for me here. Thank you very much for watching and, and sticking with this E3 content if you've watched along. And until next time, I'm John with Game with Class. Games are good.